In thinking about the typical charges of the main group elements, they follow patterns that are pretty clear based on position on the periodic table. Group 1 forms plus 1 cations, group 2 plus 2, group 6 negative 2, group 7 negative 1, so on and so forth. We're not so lucky with the transition metals, which can exist in a variety of oxidation states. And most transition elements, I would say, have access to multiple oxidation states. Plus 2, plus 3, for example, in the case of iron. Plus 2, plus 3, and even plus 4 in the case of palladium. Copper can be plus 1, plus 2, or plus 3. And, so, and this is worth keeping in mind, that different oxidation states of the transition metals give rise to completely different compounds. Copper 1 chloride, for example, is very different from copper 2 chloride. This also means that the reduction potentials of the transition elements can vary widely from very good reducing agents to not so good. One thing that we also observe is that different transition elements form different things when they're in water and in air. Generally, the lighter transition elements form stable cations in water. You can take, for example, chromium-3 chloride and dissolve it in water, and the Cr3 plus cation will be stable for a very, very, very long time. While the heavier elements tend to oxidize in the air and form oxyanions. So manganese, for example, forms permanganate, MnO4 minus. Molybdenum can form MoO4 2 minus. These oxyanions tend to be the stable forms of these elements, for example, in aqueous solution or in compounds that have been allowed to sit out in air over long periods of time. Now, a number of the transition elements will react with oxygen on heating in what we can think of as a kind of oxidation process. So, for example, heating titanium metal in the presence of oxygen gas will lead to the production of titanium 4 oxide as a solid and notice that this is an oxidation of the titanium metal, which is in the zero oxidation state, to TiO2, in which titanium is in the plus four oxidation state. So this is just a general overview of the typical properties of the transition metals, and I wanted to close this discussion of transition metal properties with just a brief look at some reduction potentials related to transition metal containing species, just to show that these can vary over quite a wide range depending on the nature of the transition metal. So the focus here is on dichromate, permanganate, these are oxyanions containing chromium and manganese respectively, and titanium dioxide, which is an oxide of titanium obviously, with titanium in the plus four oxidation state. If you look at the reduction potentials for each of these species, you can see that both dichromate and permanganate are pretty good oxidizers with a positive reduction potential indicating that they're readily reduced. They will readily pull electrons from a reducing agent and become reduced themselves, acting as oxidizers in the process. And permanganate is the strongest oxidizer on the list with the most positive reduction potential for the permanganate anion. On the other side of the coin, TiO2 is not a very good oxidizer despite the presence of oxygen in the compound. <laughs> its uh, reduction potential is only negative 0.5 volts, so a difference of about 1.8 volts from the pretty good oxidizer, uh, sorry, about 2 volts, the, the really good oxidizer permanganate, known for being a good oxidizer to TiO2, which is not known for being oxidizing really at all. To close this video, let's take another look at typical oxidation states accessible to the transition metals. This figure focuses on that first row of the transition series with the 3D subshell being filled. And one thing we can notice is, first of all, the plus two oxidation state is extremely common, starting at vanadium and going all the way to zinc. And this sort of corresponds to the loss, quote unquote, of two S electrons, right? The two four S electrons lost and the remaining D electrons just sort of hanging out in the d orbitals in those cations. We also see as we get toward the center of the transition series that more oxidation states become accessible. So manganese has the most and scandium and zinc on the outside have the least number of oxidation states available to them. If we were to look at the second and third rows of the transition series, we'd see that those elements tend to have access to higher oxidation states, as high as plus eight, for example. Their larger size is part of the reason for this. Um, the smaller sized elements in the first row of the transition series just can't access that high of positive charge 
the resulting charge density would be too high.